So I've been uh, MIA for a couple of days, I guess. Uh, it's kind of unusual for me. I'm usually posting videos like once or twice a day at least. But um, I've been over on uh, PZ Myers' blog still, uh, engaging in um, really, at this point, long and drawn out uh, discussion and debate about uh, science, religion, metaphysics, um, the merits of materialism versus a process ontology and a pan-experientialist cosmology. And um, it's going well, I guess. I'm not getting completely rejected and shut down, though most of the people there are pretty much, uh, they see rationality and skepticism as ends in themselves, which is fine. I don't happen to agree with that. Um, so I'll post a link to that, um, to PZ Myers' blog again, and you can read the thread if you're interested. But I really wanted to make this video about um, a book that um, Aliman from Hawaii, whose YouTube channel is Direct Spirit, sent me. It's um, by Olaf Bryant Smith called Myths, Myths of the Self, Narrative, Identity, and Postmodern Metaphysics. And... Um, Smith in this book uh, goes through uh, the work of Kant, Heidegger, Alfred North, Whitehead, um, and finally Paul Ricoeur to um, sort of tell, in large part, you know, the story of Western philosophy, which um, up until Kant was really this move, you know, I think it could be argued further and further into um, solipsism, where the subject um, was becoming so skeptical of its own ability to know the external world that, you know, in philosophers like Hume, you've got the denial of personal identity and of causality, um, and so you're left with what after that? Nothing, really, just convention. We believe that the world is a certain way because we've been told as much by our parents and by our culture, and there's nothing beyond that. Um, you know, Kant, which which is where um, Smith begins his, his account in this book, uh, tried to reconcile Hume's skepticism with the apparently objective knowledge of science, um, but he was still left with this dualism and this basically solipsistic picture of a self that is um, not, at least a human self, that is not of the natural world um, that's somehow outside of it because the natural world for Kant was still understood to be basically a machine you know Newtonian in nature whereas the human self was morally free um, could uh, judge beauty and, and so forth uh, but Smith points out that in the last of Kant's critiques the critique of judgment um, Kant, uh, you know, analyzes um, beauty in our aesthetic sense and, and judgment and comes very close to reuniting the self with nature via uh, our feelings of, of pain and pleasure and our, our judgment of beauty, um, which is something that I think, you know, someone like Whitehead um, grasps hold of and, and fleshes out and, and develops more than Kant was able to in his life. Um, and I'm only about halfway through. I'm almost finished with the section on Heidegger. And, um, you know, I, I won't say too much more about this book until I finish it, and I'll probably post another video at that point. But so far, uh, Smith's sort of explanation of, of what Kant was trying to do and his... Um, explanation of, of Heidegger's work as well very clear they've you know I've learned um, a lot just reading these two first chapters and he hasn't even really gotten into uh, his project in this book and what he is trying to say which is really you know to unify um, science and religion or, or if not unify them at least show how they're not inherently contradictory um, you know, he's trying to um, heal the wound of, of separation between consciousness and nature, between facts and value, values, um, and in, in a way re-enchant um, our human universe. 
uh, and the universe itself. So um, check it out, Myths of the Self, Narrative Identity, and Postmodern Metaphysics by Olaf Brown Smith. And uh, thanks so much, Aliman, for uh, sending this to me. I'm really enjoying it so far, and um, um, anticipate uh, follow-up videos about it. Thanks for listening.